Hey everybody, and welcome to the next episode of It's Bananas with Jeremy Fisher. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Guys, this happens every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and if you guys enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're a comedian and you want to come on the show, feel free to comment below or shoot me a message on Instagram or wherever you find me. On Guys, on this week's episode, we have Eric Escobar. Eric, thank you so much for coming on. Hello, it's bananas. What an appealing title. Uh, appealing. Have you heard yeah, that yet? Is, how much time do we have? Are we done? Is yeah, that, right. that was all I have. <laughs> so Eric, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm a comic from LA. Um, you may have seen me on like Last Comic Standing or BuzzFeed or Craigslist. A good <laughs> list of credits. I <laughs> Craigslist is still a thing? Craigslist is still a thing. It's where I'm getting most of my gigs. Oh, it's perfect. wonderful. Um, a lot late, of late uh, night alley gigs. Well, not always in alleys, but always late night. Be sometimes a nice motel room. It just oh, depends nice. on the gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, uh, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. A lot of love for the East Coast. Got a lot of love for the East Coast as well. And uh, what else? I just dropped a TED Talk. You can see that now on TED Talk yeah, or uh, wherever they are. Yeah, wherever, <laughs> just go TEDTalk.com. I don't know. What is it? <laughs> YouTube yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. I should know more about my intro. Yeah. But I do know that I'm going to love this podcast. I'm super excited to be on here. Awesome. I'm really glad that you uh, came on here. What's the TED Talk about? How to live a more fulfilling life okay. through humor. Nice. Um, nice. It's interesting because when we actually shot it, it was March. I want to say it was March 14th and we were doing it in Montana. And that morning, the day we were supposed to shoot the TED Talk, 200 tickets sold. It was going to be great. Um, they put a lockdown in place. Yeah. So I'm actually doing a TED Talk for three people. And yeah. it's as good as a regular open mic. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's pretty much like the open mics over here, over in uh, Toronto. I think they're the open mics everywhere. <laughs> Probably. I think so. I don't, I don't feel like you'll ever find like an open mic where it's like you'll actually have a good sized crowd. Here's Maybe. the thing that's so weird. I feel like... We've definitely both had shows where it's a show show and there's like one, two people there and it is what it is and we do our thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go to an open mic and you're like, oh, wow, five people are here. This is better than a show because right? <laughs> there's four to five. Yeah. So I'll take what I can get. <laughs> exactly. As long as I have somebody that's not a comedian that, that that's there, I'm perfectly fine with it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, bartender? How you doing? Right? Thanks. I'll have a, two more shots. Yeah. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> oh, man. Have you ever been to a show where you have to pay for drinks to get on? Um, here's the thing. In in a lot of places, there'd be like these bringer shows yeah. where you can't really get time unless you like bring people. Mm -hmm. I feel like I did a bunch of those when I first started out. And then after a certain point, I was like, I'm never going to do a bringer show ever again. Yeah. And that includes like, if I get free drinks, I'm going to take those free drinks. But if I got to pay 10 bucks for a beer, I'm not going to do it. Anything yeah. that requires <laughs> my people or my funding, I just, I'm, I'm done. I just can't do it right now. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Because, like, I definitely know bringer shows have been, like, uh, have been, like, increasingly popular over in Toronto. And, like, every mm -hmm. new show that was coming up, it's like, oh, you got to bring at least, like, two to three people in order to get on the show. And, I'm, I, like, everybody's like, no, like, we don't, we already ran out of all of our people within, like, the first year of doing comedy. And then they just don't want to see you anymore because they realize that you're not as good until, like, you eventually I, get better and better. <laughs> I totally get the concept of bringer shows. Like, the producer's like, I need to fill this room because they want this many people. So let me just get the comics to bring them. Yeah. But the weird thing about it is, I don't know about y'all, but everywhere in LA a bringer show they only attract young comics because mm -hmm. only young comics can bring out their frat or you know what yeah. I mean their friends so because of that everyone on a bringer show is usually like less than like like you said like a year in or six months in and I don't care how talented you are no one's good a year in yeah. I'm eight years in and I still suck you know what I mean like, yeah. so these shows like have the people but the quality can just be so rough sometimes because everyone's new and it's not their fault they're just super yeah, new yeah exactly and I feel like but that's what you're gonna get with like an open mic show so like, especially like a exactly show too unless like that's why I like book shows like I always like at the beginning of the year I was always just like strictly mainly like doing book shows just because I didn't want to like do these open mics and kind of just perform in front of other comedians because that's all that was really showing up at these open mics was just other comedians. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm tired of performing in front of these guys. Like you've already heard my jokes so many <laughs> times. Like I'm not going to get any value out of performing in front of you again. Well, it's, what's crazy. Weird story. So 
four or five years ago, I was going on the road and we were going to like uh, the Northwest of the States. So Oregon, Washington, and we didn't even hit Vancouver, maybe crossed over to say hi to you guys. Yeah. But what's weird about it is um, it was three dudes and we were like, we should really add a girl on this lineup because it's just three dudes. It would just be better yeah. if we had, you know, like just one of our friends who was, you know, a female come on in and like just mix up the energy a little bit. So I had a friend who was a comic and we hit her up and we were like, hey, we're going to go on the road. If you want to be a part of this, we would love if you were a part. And she was like, I haven't done stand up in about three months. So I'm rusty. Like, I would love to do this, but I'm super rusty. Yeah. So the other guys, we were just like, well, just do all your open mics. Just do an open mic every day until we get on the road. We still got a couple weeks and you'll you'll get better. You'll build your time up. Mm-hmm. She was like, OK. First couple shows, she is dirty. I mean, like rape joke molestation joke like there's a holocaust joke an hpv joke and i was like yo you can't be Just we have some clean everything. shows coming up yeah i was like you can't be doing that and she's like well the only reason why i went really dirty and blue is because when i was doing all these mics my regular clean material never got a rise out of the crowd yeah but what do comics love dirty gross stuff yeah because <laughs> they have the most so the- weird minds <laughs> Exactly. So the open mics almost hurt her and almost made her like a worse comic. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Because the only point of reference she had was like dirty comedian sense of humor. Yeah. That's pretty much like the same thing over here. Like, but we don't, I, I haven't seen like people go crazy into like the rape and pedophile and like all that kind of uh... stuff here. But there have been like those one or two people that kind of talk about it or like just hatred against women. That's, that's a huge thing um, that I've seen a couple of times. And I always felt if you do something offensive or mean and you're it, – it's I'm putting my hand close to my face. Yeah. If it is this offensive, then I'm putting my gland close to my head. It should be this funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it can be offensive, but it has to be funny. Yeah, well-crafted. But sometimes, like really well-crafted. Like, But people aren't good at crafting. Yeah. <laughs> it is like I'm going to go on a rant because this is how I feel. I'm going to tell yeah, you Yeah, exactly. Feelings. You're like – Dude, no, that's that's not going to work at the Catholic college we're doing next week. Yeah, exactly. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So uh, what got you like started into doing stand-up comedy? So I um, I know you have theater sports in Canada. Yeah, are you familiar with theater sports? Theater sports? Is that where people like mm-hmm. do athletic sports, but like for theater? Um, this is way less cool. Okay. So theater... <laughs> So theater sports, um, it was kind of like Whose Line Is It Anyway? It's okay. a very improv-based kind of thing. And um, when it came to the States, they called it comedy sports. And I started with comedy sports in high school. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of improv, a lot of fun games. Um, and then in college, I was really interested in doing stand-up. So I did one open mic in 2008. Mm-hmm. I did <laughs> the last comic standing audition in 2010 with two jokes. Um, I probably went a little early probably before my time yeah and then in 2012 i was like i've been doing a lot of improv but i've been getting a little bit into stand-up i really want to make this my thing like i I just graduated college i didn't want a full-time job i'm gonna go all in i'm gonna do it i don't really want to do it in improv i want to do it with comedy and with Mm stand-up so um yeah i did a a couple open mics a couple classes a couple shows and i haven't looked back since that's awesome And you've been like maintaining that like consistently throughout, like how was your first year into like stand-up comedy? Um, My first official year. So I kind of brought up last comic standing earlier and it was kind of an unfair credit Mm -hmm. because they put me on the show in 2010. um, So it was a credit. So when I first started my first year, even though it was hard, like the rest of us and it was tough and I was trying to get spots. um, I was really lucky to at least have kind of like something on my resume, even though it wasn't that good to be like, Hey, but could I feature at this club, even though I definitely don't have the time? Yeah. Or here's a local club. Can you put me up? By the way, I have this credit. Oh, you're putting me up now. Wow, I'm really bad and should not be up right now. So <laughs> it, was, um, it was a more successful year and a more lucky year, my first year for me. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, that credit only goes so far. And yeah. it was still a lot, of, a lot of hustle. And I look back on it, and there were some really great times and lucky times. But there were so many times where I was like, oh, my Lord, I can't believe I drove six hours for an unpaid three minutes. Or I can't believe I, you know what I mean? It's the hustle of doing this, though. Like Exactly. Really? Six hours every night at open mic to go up at 1 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's just pulling like a Kevin Hart right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just doing your thing. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. Just doing that. Ugh. 
it's really sucked just like because I, I I was only doing this for just over a year and then this whole oh. coronavirus thing like happened and I was just like I was trying to do like 250 shows this year but that just mm -hmm. went like completely downhill I'm like I was doing really good for for how many shows I was doing every like every day like like being consistent with it and everything and then as soon as that came out I'm like oh son of a bitch <laughs> Well, and that's the thing too. I think there is uh, there is an energy and there is a sense of like momentum that makes you stronger. Yeah. So when you're doing your reps, if you're like, I want to do 250 this year, I'm going to go up a little more than I want to. I'm going to get that more stage time. It's going to be great. You start getting stronger and then something like this hits and you're like all those muscles just like <laughs> yeah, kind right. of like not atrophy, but you're like, oh, I could have killed it. But now I like forgot half my set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. Just keep practicing. Keep writing. This is a good like writing time too. And uh, like right yeah. now, I'm just kind of like working on creating my own uh, my own side business. That way, I just don't Hell have yeah. to work like somebody else's nine to five. I can work whenever I want to work. And honestly, it's been it's working out so far. Like I'm still doing my nine to five, but I'm waiting to get to that transition of like getting out of it. Because then once we get back to like doing all of these clubs and everything, I'll actually be able to um, like just kind of go out and not have to worry about like getting up early for somebody else. <laughs> that's like the weird game that i think a lot of especially new comics don't get yeah they're like i'm gonna quit my job and just do comedy right and then it's like whoa that's a horrible idea yeah, right <laughs> dumb dumb don't do that hang yeah. on to your job as long as you can yeah, yeah and i honestly feel like no one should quit to do comedy the real game is like start your own business or start yeah. a side business or like get a job with flexible hours don't just quit a gig to do comedy. Yeah, just have sure. a gig that allows you to have that time to do comedy. So if you have to, so if you get paid a hundred bucks for a weekend where you have to pay 300 in airline fees, you don't feel so bad about it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's pretty much like what I'm doing with my business. Just like trying to like build it up as much as I can because it's an online business. So I don't have to actually worry about Oh, sweet. Yeah. Right. Like I'm doing video editing right now. I've been doing like, I have an animation project. So I'm actually turning a comedian sets into an animation. Oh, that's so cool. Right? That's so, dope. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm like, fuck, like, if I can just manage to get a, a good enough, like a good amount of projects done within like a month, as long as I can get over what I'm getting paid at my normal job, I can just quit that and just keep doing this like full time. So I have a bit. It has an octopus, a ton of detail, and it's 3D. I'm going to pitch it to you uh, right after this. Just the 5D. 5D. 5D? It'll be great. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> That's two more Ds than I know. Hey, man. I can only I've handle 3Ds, Ds, okay? <laughs> I'll try to think of the hardest thing to animate, and I yeah. will send it over to you. It'll oh. be a 45-minute clip. It'll oh, be great. Man. That'll, be, uh, that'll be pretty <laughs> pricey for you if you got the money for it. Hey, man, I've committed to the bit. I've right. committed to the bit. Let's do it. <laughs> and he'll start a GoFundMe to create the hardest animation ever just oh to play god. a prank on my you... friend, Jeremy. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, my God. Trying to pitch that to everybody and see if they would actually buy into it. It's like five yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll There's literally be inside the whole of your mind. <laughs> you have to do it for oculus and regular and imax i don't get the cross stream but you have yeah. to figure it out yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> All right. awesome awesome so what are you doing to keep up with comedy then right now since everything's being closed down like are you doing zoom shows or yeah brother i've actually i've been lucky and it's been a lot of work but i've been able to get up at least once a night since quarantine yeah um so for us that was about march 16 march 17 i think that was our official date but um but yeah i've been able to get a show or a couple times i've did on mics or what's crazy about now is back in the day pre-quarantine at least in los angeles it's doable but if you want to get in three four sets in a night two three sets in a night it's a hustle it's mm -hmm. like let me get this early show let me ask to get up early hopefully they'll get up early then i'm gonna drive an hour over here i'm gonna hopefully get up on time for this i'm gonna leave early for that feel like a big old doo-doo head and then go over and catch the midnight show over here yeah i wait three hours so i can get up at 3 a.m to do it so if you want to get multiple sets it was doable you just have to put in that work and put in that grind mm -hmm. now with zoom shows being acceptable i i can do an 11 a.m show in london I can do a 2 p.m. show in Berlin. I can do a 5 p.m. show in New York. Yeah. And then I can go over and do like an 11 p.m. show in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And it's great. Yeah. It's not the same, but I feel like a boss. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> how do you find it's like, fun. how do you find getting like a reaction from the audience? Like how, how has that experience been? 
I think for that, that's really in terms of how the producer's running it. Because mm-hmm. some producers will like cultivate a really great audience and everyone will be unmuted and they'll laugh and they'll have a good time and you don't cry in the shower that night. It feels great. But other times there might be some producers, and this is not them being a bad producer. This is just them maybe being new to Zoom or new to StreamYard or any of these online formats where they'll be like, all right, I'm going to have an open room so people can just like bomb us if they want to. <laughs> and uh, everyone unmuted. And you're like, uh, okay, um, this is weird, but thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a weird variety of just how people are running it, the platforms. Um, like I said, it's not the same, but I think rather than feeling the laughs and rather than feeling that like happiness and enjoyment from the crowd. Now it's more like, I just want to like you enough and I don't necessarily care if you laugh. I just hope you follow me on Instagram afterwards. You know what I mean? Or I hope you donate five bucks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like for you laughing now is like sending me a dollar on cash app and I will gladly take that trade off. And I like how your little uh, (laughs) cash app thing is uh, right there on your, um, on your background. (laughs) Every every dollar counts. Yeah. Every fifty cent counts. You can get my merch at ericescobarcomedy dot com. Oh, no, okay. please don't. Well, do. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I like how you're wearing a Team Bernie shirt. I guess that uh, I guess that worked out really it's, well. <laughs> it it did not. I'm pretty sad, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> what is going I on heard... down there? <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Like, I think there was a lot of attention on, like, the Democratic Party and, like, Biden, oh, Bernie's catching up. No, Biden's got it. Hey, yeah. stop touching kids. Yeah. Like, there was all this talk about it. And then COVID hit, and we all kind of refocused what was up. Mm-hmm. Um, they just found, the U.S. government just put out there that they actually confirmed the existence of UFOs. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm a big alien guy. And I'm like, how is this news going under the climate right now yeah, like right. folks so folks on covid we, we're not even thinking about aliens yeah aliens are so cool maybe it so was just cool. like their way of trying to distract people but everyone's just like oh we got covid we can't be distracted right now it's everything's got to be about covid everything has to be about covid covid is completely fake it is all a ruse just for the alien release yeah, that's right. all it is <laughs> we're just killing people just so we don't know about et yeah yeah oh god that's yeah. not true stay inside Dear yeah right god, it's just like inside. everything that we're saying is <laughs> Not fact. Clarify. <laughs> only a bit. Only a bit. Yeah. ET is definitely real, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, there, there can't be this many planets in our galaxy and just like not have another sort, like, form of life forms out there. Like, I agree. It's, There's too many things. Yeah. We're so big. And just like the way that kind of like how we're seeing like monkeys evolve right now. Like, if, if you've seen like there's an orangutan or whatever that's using like a spear to uh, like go fishing because they saw how Whoa. humans were doing it and they learned how to use, they're learning how to use tools. So it's just like a way that evolution works. It's like, we start at the basics and then we kind of like develop. And that's why we're getting into like learning how to do like, like space force, like how we're getting into space force right exactly. now. Exactly. We're just developing at yeah. a very fast rate. Yeah. This is not to do with aliens, but it's a fun story. I, <laughs> <laughs> I read this thing. This is probably a couple of years ago but there were these gorillas in this zoo Mm -hmm. and I feel like they started like paying the gorillas in like rock. No, like somehow the gorillas were getting rocks and the gorillas could trade the rocks for bananas if they did like certain tasks. Mm -hmm. So it was basically a way to teach the gorillas like, Oh, here's a money system. Yeah. So um, the gorillas started getting these rocks. They would trade them for bananas. And then after like, no joke, less than a day of doing this, they found out that all the gorillas were giving all the bananas to the one female gorilla for sexy time. So they created prostitution within a day of figuring out a money system. Oh my! God. And I'm like, man, animals are so cool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they can evolve. They can think fast. They're oh, they're man. great. Just Good imagine, like we get to like a Planet of the Apes type of situation. It would be bananas. It hey! Would. Oh my lord! Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> that was more for me than but the could, listeners right could you imagine if um if like we were in a simulation though like that kind of realization because like you gotta think like, if if we can if yeah. they can like figure out the code for our dna if they can figure out like what they're doing right now with our brains too or figuring out the codes of like how we're how our brains are wired like that's what elon mm-hmm. musk is doing with uh neuro like what is it neuro neurotech or whatever he has that thing where you can actually it's weird because like basically right now we're kind of cyborgs because if you want to find something out on your phone, yeah, your brain transmits a message to your hand, your hand types it into your phone, mm-hmm. or your brain transmits it to your voice and you voice your phone. 
I want to say his thing is they want to skip the step in the middle. Yeah. So you can think it and it searches. Yeah. You know what I mean? Opposed to think it and type it in or think it and say it. Yeah. And that is some, that is some, what's the movie with, uh, not true lies. Uh, Oh, what's that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh. One of the three booby lady. Oh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, they did that remake too. Primal. Um, they did. Uh, it's like that. Yeah. That's total recall. Like. Total recall. Total recall. Yeah. We're entering total recall right now. Oh man. That would be insane. Just be like, uh, just everything going like into our brains and just like being able to do that Boom. kind of stuff. Cause like even, even Elon Musk has been talking about how like he's going to be using like his technology to kind of like help people who have brain damage and stuff like that to like to use all their um like their nerves and nervous system and whatever like uh, you can people can look this up like i i don't know all the details yeah. but like it's, i it's, feel like it's, we it's both insane. know half of the information yeah. <laughs> and we're putting out half the... <laughs> right here's a bunch of things we don't know about but look it up <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's been, i could look it up right now i mean like i'm on my computer i could easily just do that but i'm too lazy but <laughs> yeah do a lot of images of just like the three booby lady. That's right. my image of Total Recall. Just the three, the three booby lady. The flashing. Yeah, it was very. Oh man, that image stuck with me forever. Now I can't. It did. I, think I can't was... even be with a regular woman without thinking of three tits. Yeah. You gotta, hey, like, draw can I borrow one a pillow and a marker really quick? Yeah. yeah let me just put this on some duct tape. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane though because he was also talking about how like. It would also improve like our memories, like improve like our intelligence too. So we could literally be like all superhumans with our with our intellect, just having this kind of device inside of our brain. I'm all for it, but the thing I'm scared about is even right now, you have people living with iPhones and Alexa and Google House. Mm-hmm. And then we also have humans living also still like very like primally i guess like there are still people living in huts there's still people in like smaller villages with no access to tech very basic you know mechanics or engineering and it's weird because if we become these superhumans there's it's like aliens can look at us and be like what's a human well you have this cyborg over here who's a superhero then you have joe uh joe is going to climb up that palm tree and get some bananas because yeah. that's his family's food for the day and it's like whoa he's what a build spectrum. his house out of like shit and straw or whatever like yeah he's a great guy enjoying yeah. his uh water <laughs> you know, right you know it's gonna be crazy just like What's when up? humans eventually start leaving earth and then those people are going to be the ones that are left behind yeah right and here's the thing are they going to level up you know what I mean? Are they going to then like form into a new society or are they just going to keep doing their thing and be like, oh, whatever. I think yeah, they would just thing. keep doing their thing because people with technology have already been around them. They know about technology because yeah. like, especially with people like film crews, they just go and start filming them. So, I mm-hmm. mean, like they they've seen it before. Uh, it's just a matter oh, of like, man. oh, this is just the, our way of life. We don't want to change. Oh, that's wild. That's so crazy. So could you just imagine like all, most of humanity just like leaving Earth through its like spaceships? So you like these people just see everybody leave and then they're just on a world by themselves. How crazy would it be if you had to like leave a family member and then you had to like do like space mail in order to space talk to them? You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to write a letter from Mars. Can oh. you bring this bag down yeah, right? and then just get it to uh, Manila? They're, uh, they're over there. Well, it depends on if like the United States Postal Service is still, uh, is still active at that time. It's going to be the United States Postal Space. space, space no, we can do better. Space. Uni- yeah. United Space Postal Force. I don't know. Space, It'll be Force, a thing. Postal, space Force Postal Service. There we go. Space Force <laughs> Postal Service. <laughs> It is uh, three hundred thousand dollars for a stamp. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's the America. You edition. can send Look it anywhere in the galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> we have dinosaurs this uh, this season. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it would be crazy to see something like um, uh, what was the uh, that that movie a long time ago with the bugs? The total bugs. Recall. No, not the Total Recall. The other <laughs> the other one was there, like uh, Star Starship Troopers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starship Troopers. Oh man, oh, I heard they were doing Lord, a remake of that one with the, the original cast too. Oh. oh my lord! Yeah, but even was... still, like, imagine a situation like that where we had to like fight bugs <laughs> going into space. Like, whew. I would love it if Men in Black was a documentary. If that was just true, that'd maybe be it great. was a documentary. Maybe it's a documentary in like a alternate universe or even like on another planet. Biff accidentally put a copy of back or men in black into the DeLorean in 2015. And then when we fly back to 85, it got 
It was it's the sports almanac. Yeah. I'm making a lot of '80s movies references. I'm probably gonna hit only two people with this. It's fine. Maybe. It's fine. Uh, who cares? <laughs> I doubt anybody under the age of like 24 is listening to this. I would love if your whole market was kindergartners. Just your whole market was five to seven year olds. I mean, You're the only ones tuning in on the. I mean, like the, the very beginning of like my my episodes, like they weren't like PG thirteen kind of talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the first couple episodes, like, I was actually, like, getting high with the people and just, like, started talking with them while being high. Because well, I'm like, this is a great way. Like, if we're ta- if we're high, we can easily just talk for, like, hours on end and not have to worry about not, like, stopping in the middle of the conversation. Well, we've gone through 80s films, aliens, and being cyborgs. So this is perfect high talk. This yeah, is right? delightful, stony conversation. I know, man. <laughs> supposed to be talking about comedy and everything for those people that are tuning in for that. <laughs> I feel like that's how a lot of just like talks or like podcasts or interviews start. It's like, all right, cool. This we, is a comedian. Let's yeah. talk about comedy out of nowhere. So aliens, right? all right? So aliens, there's a space force. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Did you, did you see Trump like waving that space force flag? Like a, what was it last week or something like that? During the I, whole like thing. And I'm like, why, why are you like promoting it right now? I pride myself. I did pride myself on being very in the know and really keeping up to date on news and what's going on. Since quarantine has started, I've kind of just given up because Trump is always going to have just annoying stuff going on. Uh, Bernie, you just get sad. (laughs) You got Biden and that's just awkward. I don't want to address that. It's just, I'm just completely ignored. Especially with his his latest comment too, about um, how like, if you have to choose between like Trump and him, like you're not a real like he talked he was talking to a black guy he's like if you have to choose between Trump and him you're not a real black guy. I'm oh like, my god! Yeah. yeah, that's horrible. Right? He said something recently where it was like it wasn't even recently it was like a month ago where he was like, oh yeah, we created this program for like rich kids and minorities. <laughs> he like basically called out like he was like there's rich kids and then you got like brown kids and it's like no yeah. i think some of the brown kids do pretty well why are some politics like kids... this why do we only get this to choose from like a sh- like a, what was it south park thing like a shit sandwich <laughs> or like a yeah <laughs> america's crazy because i think we were we were just founded on such like a hell yeah yeah like vibe that it's carried over into everything our tv our food our politics and I'm all about it, like, hell yeah, but also like, whoa. Yeah, it's like sometimes we need to pump yeah. the brakes a little bit, like take uh-huh. a step back realizing <laughs> what we're doing. Yeah, heaven yeah. Let's do a heaven yeah for this. It'd be great if we said a, a purgatory yeah. I'll settle for a purgatory yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. That's, that's um, What is Canada like right now, or Toronto like in terms of the quarantine? Because for us... Arizona, my next state over, we had a club just open up. I think there's a club in Oklahoma that's opening up. Yeah. Are you guys getting comedy rolling out a little not, bit? Or not no, really? because like uh, they haven't opened up any of like like uh, clubs or bars or anything like that. Like they're only doing Word. for for restaurants. They're only doing um, like uh, delivery. So, okay. but they've decided they're starting to open up like uh, offices and stuff. Like, but obviously you have to take precautions and and whatnot. For doing that like luckily my business like my work is they're like okay we're just gonna keep you guys working from home right now which is crazy Perfect. because like i'm working for a studio working on like uh big feature films oh so, wow yeah, so we're actually working with like highly sensitive material and they're like perfectly okay with working from home so and like right now i'm working like with uh, disney and marvel like that's what my studio mm-hmm. works with so like if they're cool with us just like continuing to do this like kudos for them like i hope they keep doing that just for like everybody's safety but uh, yeah, like I'd rather not go in because like, I don't want to be a part of like the first wave of going back and like everybody getting back together, especially if stuff is still like averaging around like 500 cases a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are the, are the protests, are you guys getting, I don't know if Canadians protest. You there, guys seem like there, a nice bunch. There are, <laughs> like there are some people that do it, but I don't feel like it's a lot. Like there's not a lot okay. that you can really hear about. Like we've, the only thing that we really do is like people just go outside and like especially with the weather getting a lot nicer here in Canada, like especially Toronto, like everybody's wanting to go out and like walk around and just sit on the grass. I don't know why you go outside just to sit on grass, like just go outside yeah. on your balcony or out on your porch or whatever and just sit there. Like, I love I love that because I feel like when Americans protest, it's like we're going to get a big group. We're going to spit at people. We're going to yell at each other. We're going to honk horns. We're going to give the middle finger. Yeah. We're going to 
Celebrate. Get we're gonna get we're gonna stop traffic. We're gonna mess with essential workers, and then you guys are like, we're gonna protest. I'm gonna go for a nice walk to the park. Maybe grab some tea. Just kind of. Yeah. Maybe have a little bit of a picnic. That is me. Yeah. At my, as like, long as we're keeping social FU. distancing and like a lot of people were wearing masks and like gloves and everything. Like everybody's smart about it here, which is really That's good. Like crazy. everybody here is actually listening to the government and like. God, I, hate, I wish I was there. Yeah. It's honestly like really good. Like Ontario is doing way better than Quebec, which is crazy. And like we have a lot of people here. So. Well, isn't Quebec the more like french vibes i feel like the more french vibes places like no we're gonna hang out in our cafes drink our wine and smoke Pretty our much, cigarettes yeah, yeah. we wanna we wanna live our I lives mean, they want to be their own, they want to be their own country too so i'm like whatever like we don't need that <laughs> what is it like a million people it's probably like it's got to be not that big <laughs> right and it's funny too because like whenever you're doing like contests or stuff or like um phone plans it's like oh this applies to everywhere except for quebec jesus yeah. We have a um, a part of it's like Northern California, Southern Oregon, and it's a place called Jefferson. And Jefferson, for years, has been trying to be their own place. Yeah. But it's crazy because it's a lot of just like small towns. So a lot of people are like, I get your every year you're trying to push to be your own little region or country or whatever, but you realize all of you are gonna die if that happens. You will receive no government funding. Yeah. Like no one will take care of like any of anything. It's like how are you even gonna down, like, like, worry about like imports and exports and all that stuff? Like do you guys even exactly. export anything? <laughs> there are maybe two thousand of you. I don't know if that that could be your government. The yeah. whole government is just every just <laughs> that, hey, hey baby, <laughs> you wanna be a senator? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Politics, right? More like politics. politics. No, some people are definitely trying. I appreciate yeah. people who are. Yeah. <laughs> like we're trying over here. We're we're doing we're doing pretty well, I think. So So you were I wanna go back to really quick. You said you were working with a major studio. Yeah. Um you got some Disney Marvel stuff going on. So here's the thing. Um I was I booked my one of my first big T V things and we we're supposed to shoot on the twenty third. Obviously that got cancelled. Yeah. And they're now trying to, from what I understand, try to like figure out how we can do it in September. They really want to get the show going. They want to do it. But it's wild because you really can't film things <laughs> yeah. without like at least a solid crew. Yeah. You know what and I you mean? Need it, like you for like a good, need for a good, like even a, like a TV production, like you need at least like a hundred people there. Like minimum. just to make things flow. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. For for you, is it all? Are you working everything in post production, yeah. or are they still doing production in like smaller? Like we're we're gaps. we do uh, post production right now. So we like my company does like uh, VFX. We do like uh, conversion, which is turning two D movies into three D. Uh, Hell yeah! And we're not five D. My not animation. Five, not five D. No, sadly. Get we're the not. octopus. Get the water scene. Yeah, right. We'll Sad, get a sadly, we're alien not there space yet. battle. We're not there. Yet. <laughs> Wait until Avatar two comes out, then we'll probably be there. Beautiful. Yeah. Hey, have you ever been to Disney World? I have not, no. <gasps> I just went to Disney World and they have an Avatar land and it is sick. If yeah. you ever get a chance, man, that yeah. Avatar land. If it ever opens whew. back up. It probably never will. Sneak in, we'll break in. Yeah. We'll uh, fake the ride. <laughs> I was hearing that Disney was saying that um, they can't be, res they're, like, they're not going to be responsible for anybody, get like any of their employees getting COVID. So Shanghai, I want to say Shanghai just opened. And for them, it's like if you're an employee or if you're someone coming in the park, yeah. you need a mask. And I think you need, it's weird, you need to get tested by a doctor. And then basically when you take the test, if you're clean and you're good enough, they give you something that basically you have to give to Disney and be like, I'm okay. And then they test you again before you get in with a temperature gun. Yeah. So it's like super extreme. And I think everyone coming in, like the likelihood of getting sick is so low because mm -hmm. I feel like half their employees can't even go because they might be too old or whatever. Yeah. Um, Disneyland floor or Disney World just opened up shops. And I'm curious to see how they're staffing that. I feel like a lot of the staff members are just going to be like, you're 19. Okay. Yeah. You're over 30. I'm fine. No, get out of here. Yeah, right? like, no, I'm trying my best. And then Disneyland, I don't think we're opening up until in California. I don't think we're opening up till like the end of the year. Oh my god! So we're actually so are, like in December. So like everybody January. in California is actually being a little bit smarter about this whole thing, except for Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
companies are being smarter people are being dumb yeah yeah you're always gonna have the dumb people like regardless yeah but i think in america it's a lot more which is sad (laughs) yeah and it's just it sucks because i think people are just getting itchy it's a natural thing to feel so like you're in quarantine you haven't left the house for 50 days it's it's i understand that it sucks but here when you don't we're not a country where it's like it sucks i'm gonna suck it up and keep moving it's Mm -hmm. it sucks let's do something about it i got rights and it's like oh well yeah but hold on buddy all right let's stop going to your bar yeah yeah (laughs) Oh my god, it's funny because I remember seeing some pictures of like bars opening too, and like everybody just going in. I'm like, uh, why? This is how it's gonna spread even more. <laughs> <laughs> I um I did something that I don't want to admit, but I'm gonna admit it, Do it. for the listeners. Do it and for the podcast. This will get all the views. Um, so I haven't seen my girl, or I didn't see my girlfriend for about a month, and it sucked. And then we we're like, hey, what if we just do like a I'll drive in my car. You drive in your car. We'll pull next to each other and we can eat and just talk. Mm-hmm. Great. Social distancing. It's not dangerous. And then um, about two weeks after that, so that was about two weeks ago. So yesterday she was like, hey, do you want to eat again? Like car to car. I'm like, I love that. Let's get lunch again. I miss you. So she's like, here's what's up. The bar that I work at, they just opened up for dining. Would you want to get takeout from there and then sit in our cars and do a remote thing? But she's like, I kind of want to just go in, not grab a drink, not like sit down, not mingle with people. Say, Excuse me. I just want to go in to see what it's like. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. That'd be cool. So we went in, we got our food and uh, we waited like five minutes for our food. And then we would see people coming through the door because this is the first thing that's open. This yeah. is like the first bar that's open and seeing people's reactions as they walked in. It was either like, yeah. Yeah, they were just so happy, so excited. Civilization, oh my god. Yeah, they're like, what are these things? Or they would walk in, and you could see their brain explode. Yeah. Like, they did, <laughs> like they did that, they're like, what's they start. This? They start, like, poking things with, like, sticks and everything. Exactly. They were, they, that literally happened. People were, like, looking around, like, touching tables. <laughs> it was so weird. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And everyone was sitting, like, far away from each other, and everyone was just, like, looking at one another, being like, ah. And then we, we were in there for like a couple minutes, got our food, left, got in the car. But we parked in a place where we could see people like come in. Yeah. And there were people that would like come in, go outside, think about it, and then go back in. And it happened like four times. Yeah. It was beautiful. <laughs> oh, man. Were you at least wearing a mask? I wore a mask the whole time. I've been wearing a mask. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't been wearing gloves as much as I should, but yeah. I was wearing gloves, a mask. It was really hot, but I put on pants instead of gym shorts and a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. Oh my God. How do you do that? It's uh, air conditioning. That's how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where would we be without air conditioning? <laughs> I think if we didn't have air conditioning, we would literally be like four steps back in evolution. Probably. We would like just get to like the electric car right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we would just get a Yaris in 2020 if oh, we didn't man. have AC. Do you have an electric car? Um, I have a Prius. It's like a half electric car. Uh, okay. You're one it's, of those guys. It's great. It's uh, it's great because I help, hate helping people move. Yeah. Never never will anyone ask you to help them move when you when, own a yeah, Prius. Yeah, when you say I have it's a wonderful. Prius, yeah. It's like, oh, never mind. Yeah. I'll ask somebody else. Clearly you're busy. Yeah, exactly. No, I can fit the couch in there. I yeah. can fit at least one eighth of it in yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> chop it up in a little bit. I can do it in about yeah. two runs. It's fine. <laughs> I can get um, a six pack and an ashtray. That's as much as I can carry get to their place, here's your ashtray, and then just leave with a six-pack. It's great. <laughs> nice. So are you working on anything, uh, any projects right now, any any comedy projects or whatnot that people can check out? Yeah, actually. I uh, I just produced a film, a short film called Morning Beautiful. We, um, we were trying to shop it out to a lot of, like, film festivals, just, like, events that could probably get us some cred. Mm-hmm. But with COVID, it's tougher yeah. I thought it'd be a little easier. I'd be like, oh, there must be online festivals going on. We could stream other places. Not really. Um, <laughs> so we just produced that, but we just signed a deal with uh, Shorts.TV. Mm-hmm. So um, that will actually be coming out uh, hopefully within the next couple months. That's really exciting. And then um, what else am I working on? I'm working a lot just on like booking my fallout. And hopefully when fall comes, they don't steal those dates away from me and say sorry everyone's dying yeah. and it's like oh everyone's I still get dying. It. i'll like, stay home we yeah. haven't even got we haven't even got the second wave we're still on the first 
Exactly. It's like, please, I'll perform for 10 people. Well, yeah. we only said nine tickets. All yeah. right, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Just make sure everybody's spread out, at least worth like six feet of distance in between every per- like each person. I'm fine with that. Exactly. <laughs> Hello, friends. Please stop throwing oranges. You're so close. Yeah. I, um, I definitely feel like that TED Talk was like the big thing for – at least the past month, it was like a really exciting thing that I wanted to come out and it's mm-hmm. out. So I'm super stoked about that. Check that out yeah. on TED Talk. I'll definitely or to, I'll throw that in the description too so everybody can check it out. Hell yeah. Yeah. And um, if I have anything coming up, I definitely post it all on my Instagram. So don't hesitate to follow me on Instagram at Eric Escobar, E R I K E S C O B A R. I post a lot of okay things. Okay things. <laughs> it's are, mostly my okay dog things? and flyers. It's uh, it's my dog not wanting to be filmed and yeah. uh, Zoom shows. Those nice. are all okay things. <laughs> nice. Hey, it's something. It's something. And that's what's interesting about like doing these Zoom shows too. It's like it's something that comedians really never did before. So like obviously like people aren't going to be as good at it, but eventually they're yeah. if they keep at it, they're going to get better and better. Just like with just doing comedy in general. Like the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Well, before I think like I don't know. I felt this really hard in LA and in the states. Like there's such a hierarchy and there's so many levels to it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, all right, I want to do these open mics. Hopefully I can get a set at a club. Cool. I got a set at a club. Hopefully I can get a showcase. Hopefully I need a guest set, MC feature headliner. I need a TV thing. There were like so many levels and you saw all the other people in those levels. Yeah. But now we are all the same. Yeah. Right. We are all doing five minutes into our phone at 11 PM at night with a glass of wine. Yeah. I, everyone is at the same level and I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> have you done any shows with like any any more like popular comedians like have you seen any famous comedians or comedians that you've known go on yeah actually this is crazy because this just happened last night i'm a huge fan of a, com- of a comic named uh jackie cation do you know mm-hmm. jackie cation i don't think so no she's uh she's pretty big she has a great podcast called the dork forest she has a podcast with Lori kill martin called the jackie and Lori show mm-hmm. um Lori kill martin's a, a big conan person she's in a set on conan written for conan but um, it's crazy because I remember probably about six or seven years ago, I was producing a show and uh, me and the other producer were a big fan of Jackie Cation. So we brought, she, we brought her on as our headliner. Mm-hmm. So I was on right before her. And one of the first big moments of like validation and just like, oh, cool. Comedy so cool is when I got off, Jackie was going on and she told me like good set. But wow. good set coming from a comic that you really respect is like, Oh, man. Ooh, that hits you in a beautiful place. Yeah, right? So, like, a week ago, I was really lucky because I did a show, and she was headlining, and it was great. Yesterday, I don't think the producer realized how, like, cool and funny she is. Mm -hmm. So I had to follow Jackie Cation. And it was the most stressful Zoom show of my life. These Zoom shows, I'm not wearing pants. I'm coming on. I usually have a beer or I'm all hopped up on like cigarettes and tea. Like, I don't, I take them seriously, but I'm not yeah. like, you know, but this one, I was like, I've, I'm going to put on a button up. I'm following Jackie Cation. Yeah. Um, still didn't wear pants, but that's been like the coolest comic I've gotten to do something with. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think maybe earlier in quarantine, there were a couple like cool moments, but it's weird because I feel like there are still sort of clicks in comedy yeah so all the big comics are doing zoom shows with bigger comics Mm. and then the rest of us are doing shows with each other so uh so yeah hopefully a couple more yeah nice nice what has been like your most it's bananas moment so something that's happened in your life or like comedy that's like either really good or really bad and just made you look back and like wow i can't believe that just happened um what is a this banana oh my god okay i got one yeah I, uh, this is more of like a frustrated it's bananas moment, but I definitely said, oh, this is just bananas. Yeah. So, um, I remember I was in New York a few years back. It was like maybe my first or second time in New York. And I got to perform at Gotham Comedy Club, which is this beautiful comedy club that's so cool. And I was so just like humbled and grateful to be a part. I go in, I do my set, I leave, I get in the lobby, and in the lobby, is Jerry Seinfeld. No. And I'm like, whoa, this is bananas. Yeah. And <laughs> I talked to Jerry and I'm like, hey, man, it's, it's just an honor meeting you. Um, are you doing a set? And he's like, yeah, actually, excuse me. I'm going to go on right now. And he leaves our conversation, gets on stage, 
five minutes of a standing ovation and applause break. He hasn't said anything. He is just up there looking. Everyone loves him. And I'm like, I really want to see Seinfeld live. This is incredible. But I got another spot. Yeah. So uh, I'll go to the other spot. Yeah. So I go and I go to the other spot, take a cab there, not too far. I get to the club. It's in a basement. It's very much a basement. Not a club in a basement. It's, it's more just a just basement. A basement. <laughs> yeah. It's just a basement. And all the comics are in a small hallway. It's super hot. And there's two German people in the front row. And that is the whole audience. Oh, my God. Two Germans who are tourists who don't really understand English. I wait like an hour. I go up, do my time, bomb, leave. As soon as I leave, I get a text. One of the other comics told me that Jerry took all the other comics out for dinner. Oh, my God. Man. And I skipped it for two Germans in a hot basement. And I was I wasn't even mad. I was yeah. just like, this is bananas. This yeah. is the wildest, craziest, most missed opportunity ever. Oh, and man. I'm going to eat a hot dog just, now. like a conversation like that intimate with them too? Yeah. Because uh. I don't think he even like was planning on doing it. I think he was just in like a good mood. And you yeah. know what I mean? He was like, yeah, let me do this. So you're not even getting like typical like, Mah, Jerry. You're getting like, what do you want to know, yeah. Jerry? And I'm like, ah, I, need, right? I would love to know that, Jerry. Oh, man. He could have probably picked you for his next uh, Comedians in Cars, getting coffee. Oh, my Lord. That would be – What would? okay, I have a question for you. Oh, okay. What would your car be? If you did Comedians in Cars, what car would you wish he drove up in for you? Uh, my, like my dream car is the Audi R8. Oh, So if he got okay. into that – damn i would love it but i would want to drive it i wouldn't want him to drive it i would want to drive it yeah that's the tough part because right? i feel all those guests are getting passengered and yeah. a lot of them are like i want to drive the delorean yeah. what are you doing i want to get it to 88 it's like they picked like like i picked this car specifically for you but i'm gonna drive it like no why yeah. I love this. this is my car and then we're gonna leave the car and we're gonna get some coffee which yeah. is my thing and, and you're like i have drink car, tea and then i'm gonna drop you off and then drive away in the car yeah. <laughs> oh my lord. It's like getting a it's like going out with your buddy and then getting a hooker and then he just has sex with the hooker and you're like, "Wait, what?" Yeah. I wanted this. And then he and then he forces you to drink yeah. coffee as, as he, he has you, watches it. And then he drives you. Yeah. The hooker actually picks you up and drives you back. Yeah. Which is really right? weird. She is the ride. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That's great. So what do you do what are you doing to keep yourself positive then during this whole time? Dude I've been loving quarantine. Yeah. I'm loving everything. You don't, you don't mind being at home all the time? You're like, you know what? I'm used to this. Between doing Zoom shows in different parts of the world and unemployment, I am doing more comedy and making more money than I've made in my life. Yeah. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I miss the road. I miss, uh, I miss live shows. I miss it so much. I miss socializing, being around people. Mm -hmm. But I think for the past two, three years, especially just with comedy being a very fast paced hustle of a beast, yeah. I was always traveling. I was always working. I, it was a lot, a lot, a lot. And I loved every minute of it, but I never had a chance to kind of just like have a chill period. Mm -hmm. And I've been loving this chill period. I feel yeah. like I've been on a two month vacation. I'm drinking bottles of gin every day it's great i get to be in my shorts all the time yeah i i order in pizza way more than i should it is it is great i'm having a wonderful time that's awesome yeah i guess everybody has their own like different way that they're going to treat this whole thing like some people are going to be like i needed this like i don't want to go to work right now like if, just cash in on that stimulus check like do you guys are you guys getting the stimulus check every month or is it just that one time check that you got so you guys get what? We get 2000 a, a month. Oh my, that's, so we initially got a stimulus check of $1,200. Yeah. One time, $1,200. And then for me, unemployment, I want to say it was something like $250 a week. Yeah. But I don't know if this is a California thing or a state thing, but now they're adding on an extra 600 on top of that. Okay. So I think the 600 might be weekly. It might be every two weeks we get the extra 600. So like I said, I don't know if that's a California thing or a like, other yeah, like, state thing, yeah. or a countrywide thing. Yeah. 
but we really the big bonus was that 1200 and it was a one and done yeah uh it's disappointing but it then is. again that's like a lot there's a lot of people in the u.s especially those that are like going out for like unemployment but that's yeah. a, that's a good thing with like what canada did they're like yeah if you want two thousand dollars you can just apply for it but the only thing is with the whole like uh our benefits is like we have to pay it back especially if we didn't need it so let's say if like people are still working they can still apply for it and get it like within three days but eventually the like our like the cra is gonna like come back and say like oh you were also working during this time so you're gonna have to pay that money back so okay so we have something similar for us this is how it used to be because i've been on unemployment once before yeah let's just say you're making five something every two weeks Mm -hmm. um and you have two jobs because everyone in america has eight jobs because money yeah right um (laughs) so let's just say you have two jobs let's just say you make um 200 a week on one 200 a week on another and you lose one of your jobs so you don't make as much money because you're only making half what you made but you can still apply for unemployment Mm -hmm. and if they give you 500 or whatever all you have to tell them is be like oh i made 400 this week yeah they're like okay pay us back 400 but you can still keep the extra 100 Yeah, so if you're making less than the two, you know what I mean? You yeah. can like still yeah, we do that curb for, it. Yeah, we do that for our unemployment too. Like even if you're working part-time, like if you lose your job and you get another job part-time, they'll like depending on how much you make from that part-time job, they'll just take it out of like your unemployment benefits. But with this yeah. whole like the like our CERB, which is our like COVID response benefit. You, it's, that, like, it's like RIRS, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, that we have to pay that back. If we if we didn't if we didn't need it, so it's not technically like unemployment. If we didn't, if we don't need it, we actually have to pay it back. So the people that so, like actually lost their jobs and not and like they're not saying like oh I don't want to go to my work because I feel it's unsafe. They're, it's just like no, those are people for like that actually lost their job due to it. So like a lot of uh, like bar like like restaurants uh, like a lot of um, like waitresses and stuff like that. They obviously lost their job just because like yeah, yeah. they closed down. So anything that like any business that actually closed down because of it, because they can't work from home, those people are like the, are the main ones that are entitled to actually keep it. That makes sense. Yeah, that's wild. Right. Well, for us out here too, what's crazy is like I said, pre that they would take your cut. You know what I mean? Just like the people who are still working. Yeah. But now, before it was every week or two weeks, you had to log in prove that you're applying for work. So you have to apply to work and they actually check in and be like, did they apply? Are they looking for work? Mm. And you have to report if you made anything, because if you made anything, they're going to take that out of your next cut. Yeah. But now they're not asking for those two things. That's good. Yeah. So they're not even asking like, did you make money? And they're not even asking, are you applying for work? Because so many people are applying and they can't keep up. Yeah, exactly. So what's wild about it is like, if I did make 50 bucks, theoretically I'd have to report it. But now I can't even tell them that yeah. because the system shut down. Mm-hmm. So I feel like all these people get money, and then they're gonna see like, oh, you made this much. Boom, we're gonna not, we're gonna bill you this, mm-hmm. or like, boom, we're gonna take this out, or you're no longer like able to receive anything. It's yeah. weird. It's oh, super it's, it's weird. It's right now. It's just gonna be like super interesting. Like what's gonna happen like after ever, all of this is already gone and done with, and like we have the vaccine and everybody's okay and doing well. Like what the governments are going to do to like, okay, now, now that we gave you a lot of money, we need a lot of that back. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'm saving because I know they're going to one day be like, hey, yeah, your taxes are like this. I'm like, okay, I at least got like a couple grand in the bank right? from being unemployed. You just throw over there. Yeah. Because it's wild how it's working right now. Mm. Yeah. And I can just imagine like all the comedians that are even here that are just like not really doing anything. They're just kind of like spending it on like obviously yeah. rent for one thing because like i remember uh like it, like the first month like april 1st that was like the month that everybody's like oh don't go don't go paying your rent just because like this whole situation and everybody's losing their jobs but obviously like mm-hmm. a lot of canadians actually ended up paying rent which is really nice but for those That's, that like well, couldn't afford it like sorry yeah, yeah. right but uh, they ended up like stopping the eviction uh evictions in canada so like nobody could That's get, great. yeah nobody could get evicted um from their house which was really nice. That was kind of the, the crazy thing about out here too. I feel like a lot of people were like, we're not paying our rent. We're not paying our rent. We're not going to do it. We don't have the money. Everyone's yeah. losing their job. And then everyone got their $1,200 check or their unemployment. They were like, well, okay, don't evict me. I can pay it now. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they like curved it. Yeah. And then everyone's poor again. And they're like, yeah, oh, exactly. It's like, okay, now what? For the next month, like, 
This is a yeah. recurring thing. Like, if we're still out of work, like, we're going to need more more money. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know, at least in the States, how they're going to keep track of everyone who's been making money and not reporting it. Yeah. Because that's got to be a, that's got, that's going to take at least a couple of years. Yeah. Just to, like, in this time, because we have so much unemployment. Mm-hmm. How are they going to keep track of someone like, oh, yeah, I work for four hours over here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, they I will. Guess, I know they will. Yeah. But how? How serious is it if, like, you don't report something like that over there? If you don't report it, they just take it out of the account that you – if you have money there. Yeah. But if you took all the money out of that account, then basically it's kind of like a – the chances of you getting like audited is really high yeah. and I don't want to get audited at all. Like I'm pretty good about my stuff, but like that will destroy you because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't like put things on taxes and they can find something from 10 years ago and be like, Oh yeah. With interest now you own $8,000. Yeah. And you're like, Whoa, I don't want to go to jail. Yeah. Oh man, man, that's crazy. Just dealing Welcome with like, the def- States, right? USA. I would say, yeah, right. I would like to move down to the states. Obviously, when it gets a little bit better, because uh, my mom, like she, she was born in the U.S., so I could get my dual. Oh, sweet. Yeah, but I'm just gonna wait. Where was, a li- she, uh, pardon? Where was she born? Uh, Where New was she Hampshire. born? Oh, nice. I was just in New Hampshire. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, I got a New Hampshire tattoo. I would show you, but it's really close to my my balls. Anyways, oh, keep that's going. Okay, this is uh, this is not a PG-13 <laughs> show. It's fine. And this is an OnlyFans show, right? Yeah, Isn't this, this for, OnlyFans, uh, this right? Pornhub? I mean, this is Great, specifically awesome. going OnlyFans. Donate. If you donate more, you get a little extra. Right, Woo. right. <laughs> What's a little bit of advice that you can give uh, newer comedians that are starting out? Ooh. Um, be nice. Be nice to everyone. I get a lot. I get you can have an ego, and I get people can screw you over. If people screw you over, you know what? forget it, wash your hands clean and walk away the bigger person. Yeah. Um, because there are people that I, I've been pretty nice to everyone, but there's like people I definitely worked with eight years ago and I didn't see them again. And then we worked together last year. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Or like, I don't know. You could even like, let's just say I look like a, like a gangster or like a mean, I look like a friggin' like bouncer guy or something. Yeah. Um, I might not talk to a comic for a while, but if they're looking for a bouncer for a TV show they're doing or a movie they're doing, Hey, they can talk to me cause I was nice to them. Mm-hmm. Or if I was a big old doo-doo head to them and all mean, they're not going to hit me up. Yeah. Like everyone you're playing this game with, you're going to see them for the rest of your life. You yeah. might work with them in 40 years. Yeah. So be nice to everyone. Um, also I feel like a piece of advice that I, was told in the beginning i kind of have it now but um really establish your brand yeah uh, it sounds so douchey but <laughs> yeah but everyone has like like a niche kind of like what you want to yeah. kind of like talk about and and such well look at us like if you look at like if let's just say there's a big weed convention there's a giant like weed thing and they want to bring up a comic the first person they're going to think of is doug benson because mm-hmm. doug benson's like the big weed comic yeah if someone's looking for like a I don't know if someone wants like a really fratty comic dane cook is probably their guy if someone wants a roast and they have a big roast thing jeff ross yeah. he's their guy like there's a market for everything mm-hmm. so really like think of your act is if people watch me no one's gonna remember any of my jokes but when they walk out i want them to be like oh, oh i really liked the the <laughs> gross comedian yeah or i really liked the like super feminist comedian yeah. or i really liked that old like kind of quirky comedian you know what i mean mm-hmm. like really think of how people will view you after they see your set and if they view you and think of you in that way of just one word what's the market for that okay. so if you are the silly comic mm-hmm. you can get all the silly shows be the best silly comic you can be yeah if you want to have like an accent and be like a foreign comic yeah that's totally cool make sure they remember you that way so when there's something that pops up for that they'll book you for that okay interesting that's really good to know (laughs) yeah and it's tough because i feel like i don't even man it's so hard to write jokes and bits it's hard enough to do that let alone center it around a brand (laughs) but the earlier i think you kind of realize how you come off the the sooner you will find the work that you can get the easiest. You know what I mean? Because if you're a real dirty comic, 
that's fine. If that's your brand, you know you don't. You're not going to focus on getting college shows or like, corporate shows, yeah, because that's not you. Mm-hmm. If you work really clean and you're really like, ha, 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 like a Jerry you know, Seinfeld, like, yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, this is with that act. Who would want to see that act? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. People maybe who are older, people maybe who are working at schools. You know what I mean? So you know where to like look for the work. Yeah, and it's good too. Like if you do like specifically market yourself to a specific kind of thing. There's always going to be an audience for like each specific thing. Yes. Which is good. Always. And there's always mm-hmm. going to be an audience for people that just hate comedy in general and they want to shit on every comedian because <laughs> of what they're saying. Those people are big old dum-dums and don't even think about it. Oh man, they're going to die so miserable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing too. I feel like a lot of people when they start out, they get really like hecklers like bother them and people get hate on them. Yeah. Dude, you're not, they don't deserve even your thoughts they don't deserve you to even think about them yeah if people give you hate screw them yeah you do you how bad they're always just gonna hate and they're sad yeah (laughs) how bad is like the heckling uh, hecklers over there in in the u.s um it depends i feel like a lot of hecklers the majority of hecklers are drunk and i think when they drunk heckle most of the time i don't think they're trying to be mean they're yeah. not trying to like be mean to you they just want to be a part of the show they've never been to a comedy show yeah they want to like they think of something funny and they're drunk so they just want to yell it out mm. um personally for me i try to not be mean toward hecklers yeah i uh i try to be as nice as possible just because my act is very like quirky and like silly mm-hmm. so if you're heckling me halfway through a 40 minute set and i'm mean to you it kind of breaks the illusion of I'm this like trustworthy kind yeah. guy. <laughs> and now you have to try to like get the whole audience back in the next exactly. Like, other half and you're of your like, set. whoa, he's a he's an asshole. Yeah. So I try to be as nice as possible. Like the thing I've been doing a lot is like, um, I'll do a bit and I'll be like, blah blah blah. Here's a bit. Here's a joke. And then someone will yell something out and I'll stop and I'll be like, ah, that's really funny. That's hilarious. Okay. So anyways, I was walking down the street. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like really, just get them quickly. Yeah. Or just be like, I'll um, put that in my notebook for later. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you said that? Wow. What a voice. Yeah. So and I was walking down the street. Yeah. <laughs> so I try to get it like real quickly. Um, if they are mean, like, yo, straight up yell in the microphone, bartender, bouncer, yeah. security, owner. If a club doesn't have someone who can get them out, that's a. Uh, yeah. They should. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. For like over here in uh, like Toronto, at least there's. There used to be a room specifically designated just for hecklers. Like, if you wanted to heckle a comedian, like, that's the room that you go to. But for, like, most no of the... Sh- yeah, yeah. It was called the Danger... I think I... The Danger Room? Oh, I haven't done the Danger Room. No. I just did a show similar to that. Yeah. It was in Canada. I don't know if it was Toronto, but it was fun. Yeah. It was real fun. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we had that, but they ended up uh, stopping it. I think it because it was getting a little bit too out of hand, especially I think some yeah. comedians were, like, stripping down and stuff, and yeah... <sighs> got a little bit too uh too risque there's a comic named um oh god i think it's dylan avia i hope i'm not messing up his name i think it's dylan avia we did a show together i don't know five or six years ago six or seven years ago uh and then i want to say the week or two after he was running an open mic and i don't know if he was a comic or if he was an audience member but it was a heckler someone went on stage and hit him in the head with an aluminum bat yeah Jesus. and then oh he, had, he had he had three kids has three kids they're also alive a wife and i want to say he was working for microsoft mm-hmm. and he was like their supporter but he couldn't work because this guy broke his skull oh. and he's okay now he's fine he's still 100 but i'm just like damn hecklin's taking on a new level this yeah. year oh geez we're See, starting to like, gotta... hit people with bats yeah learn a little bit of like martial arts so you can like defend yourself just in case things get a little bit too out of hand yeah, exactly. So I've seen you work at Joker's Comedy Club, you worked at Kermit Comedy Club, and you got a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. All right, you can headline. You can yeah. take our crowd. Yeah, right. <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, <laughs> good thing I learned a little bit of Krav Maga, so that was fun. Got up to, like, brown level two. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. I, uh, I know a little bit of stabbing with a butter knife. That is probably okay. the most uh, uh, you ferocious a, I can be. A spoon, too, if you want, or a spork, I guess. Ooh, yeah. like the Blue Raja? You ever see Mystery Men? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Straight up. Oh my god, I want to watch that Hulu. now. What was it? Ben? It's, it's on. Um, it's on American Hulu. Yeah. You got Hulu. Uh, I don't great. have Hulu. I just got uh, the flicks, and I got my buddy's like personal server. So, 
you know what? Go ahead and buy it on DVD. Yeah. It's worth the Amazon order. Yeah. Or I can just torrent <laughs> it like a normal person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Support the arts. Support yeah. the arts. Support the Blue Raja, the Shoveler. Hey, the I already Sphinx, pay for Netflix. If Boy. it's not on Netflix, like, come on. <laughs> I feel you. Right. I got shit to do. I got shit to pay for. I can't just buy all of these, all of these uh, subscription places. Yeah, <laughs> they do. I, I remember being a kid. And my parents were always like, cable is too expensive. Yeah. And I'm growing up and I'm like, oh man, I have like HBO, Netflix, Hulu. And I think I might have like one more. I have the WWE network. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah, I could definitely. Th- this isn't worth it. Yeah, <laughs> this right? is way too much. I'm surprised people still have cable. Like, why? Yeah. It's ridiculously expensive and they're just taking advantage of people because it's like, oh, not a lot of people are using cable. So we got to like increase our prices so that we make that money back. Yeah, and it's weird because I think all the people who have cable are also, like, Netflix people and Hulu people and Amazon Prime people, you yeah. know what I mean? They're all like, like, they have cable, but they watch Netflix all the time. Yeah, so. right. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't need, I, I stopped using it. As soon as, like, Netflix came out, I'm like, I, I don't need cable at all. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is it. This is the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember talking about live TV. I heard a crazy fact. So I used to work at ABC. We used to be coworkers. Look at that. Wow. And um, I remember Disney was broken up into five segments. It Mm. was like consumer products, media, theme parks, whatever, whatever. And I think media, which includes all the movies and like what you do and everything, they were the highest income making sector. And then I heard 50% of all the revenue that media makes at Disney is ESPN. Because people love live sports. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like cable. Like, people used to love live TV, but no one cares about live TV anymore. If we both love a show, I can watch it tomorrow. You can watch it tonight. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But it's so wild how now, like, cable only is for people who want to get stuff live, and no one wants to see anything live anymore. Yeah. I want to see it it in my own time. Like, yeah. Yeah. I have to jack off. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, can't, I can't watch it right now. Right. <laughs> Unless it's Mystery Men. Then I'll do yeah, it at the same time. Yeah, Mystery Men, yeah. That Ben Stiller. Oh, my God. That William H. Macy dressing all up in those boots. Yeah. Jeez Louise. Oh, my God. That was a great superhero movie. That's probably my favorite superhero movie. Yeah. I'll take it over Dark Knight any day. Yeah, they should remake that one. Especially, like, with the main cast, too. They're all 20 years older. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. William H. Macy's the shoveler, but he's, like, digging out his grave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Well, Eric, I want to say uh, thank you so much for, for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I had a bananas time. Uh, I this had a bananas so time. Fun. Like, it was really great talking with you. Thank you for being the second international comedian on my podcast. I appreciate it. Well, I had a great time. Like I said, guys, follow me on Instagram. Keep listening to more of these episodes of this wonderful Bananas podcast. Yeah. I think now is about the time where I'm going to do a split. Yeah. So where can uh, just uh, repeat your Instagram so people can follow you just for audio purposes? Sure. It is Eric Escobar, E-R-I-K-E-S-C-O-B-A-R. That's kind of my handle throughout most things. Instagram is my biggest thing right now yeah. um also my website is eric escobar comedy um it is down because i haven't paid for the new subscription <laughs> but it'll be up soon by the oh, time you watch this so i can easily just buy that website domain then oh gosh over. darn it i gotta get on it now oh i need to do business cards don't <laughs> please don't all right guys and uh you guys can follow me at it's jeremy fisher or follow my production company at, at uh, great fish productions thank you guys so much for watching and if you guys enjoy the video don't forget to like and subscribe Follow Eric on Instagram. Check out all of his videos. Check out his TED Talk, which he's super pumped about. And if you're a comedian and you want to come on the podcast, feel free to like comment below or shoot me a message. And I'll try to get you up uh, as quick as I can. Uh, Guys, this happens every Monday at 9 a.m. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's peel out.